Werewolves and Lycanthropy in Dungeons and Dragons. How does it work? What would happen right now if a player got bit at your table? How would you run it? What would happen? Can they even control once they do shift? What circumstances make them shift? How would they gain control over time? Or how do you even cure it? Well, that's what we're diving into here in this video and giving you a fully fleshed out system for all kinds of lycanthropy in D&D, which you can find inside of this month's issue of the DC playbook and the spooky theme of October, but we'll get into that later. First, we're gonna talk about the rules as written and then we'll work through the entire process all the way from contracting lycanthropy, what cool things you gain from it, and finally, how to cinematically cure it in a really cool way. So let's go. So first up, how does it work rules as written? Why do I feel like I need to implement some sort of homebrew here? Basically, Basically how the game has it work is once a creature with lycanthropy bites you, you make a constitution saving throw. If you fail it, you become that lycan that bit you. And if you shapeshift into them, if you transform into them, it is that stat block, the literal stat block of the creature. You, you gain those exact traits, which I totally get it. That's fine. But then that feels also very static. And now you're no longer, it doesn't matter what, if you were a barbarian, a sorcerer, a wizard, whatever you were, you shift and now you are just always that exact thing. But then there's a variant rule where they say sometimes you can let the cool traits that you had, like fey ancestry, if you were an elf or something, transfer over. So there's some room for homebrew here, which is where I'm coming in and diving into this whole thing. They also mentioned some things about you forgetting things. If you, whenever you shift, you don't remember what happened while you're in that crazed state. And they also mentioned individuals being able to master this thing and be able to truly control their lycanthropy form, but there are no mechanics mentioned for this at all. And the part that maybe gets me the most is it's really easy to get rid of is just simply cast remove curse and it's gone. Now, of course, this might differ for you and even my, myself have given different levels of difficulty of how to remove this curse if a player actually gets it because you might not want them to have to jump through hoops or maybe that's the whole cool part of this adventure that they have to find out how to do it and it become a whole thing, which don't worry, I got you covered, but let's go ahead and get into my my homebrew solution for this whole thing, which really flushes out the mechanics, gives you options of how to control lycanthropy, customizable options of what you get when you shift into the many different kinds of lichens out there. So let's go. Before we can talk about lycanthropy, we have to first contract lycanthropy, which is either gonna come from one of two ways. Physically getting it, some sort of bite or transference of bodily fluids, again, usually a bite of some kind, or you actually got cast some sort of magical curse on you that put the lycanthropy curse on you. So I got you covered in both ways. We came up with a spell for lycanthropy, which spell components are the target's blood and a creature's blood, which would be your bestial creature of the lycanthropy form that you get. Or of course you get bit by a lycan. Either way, you have to make a constitution saving throw and on a failure, you are infected with lycanthropy. Or I guess the third way would be that you are born a lichen and either your mother or father were a lichen and it transferred onto you. But don't worry, I have a table for that in there to see if the offspring is a lichen or not. Or two different lichens of two different species. Maybe a wolf and a badger had a lichen child and takes on the traits of both. Okay, so now we've contracted this thing, but how does transforming work? There are three ways that transformations can happen. Two of them, you're out of control and one of them, you're in control, but you have to earn that one and truly be able to master this thing, which we'll get into in a second. The first way is from an extremely emotional state, something having to do with you losing control of your emotions. I think of this as a charisma save. Charisma is your force of personality and your own personality, even some sort of possession type things. I see this in this avenue. So here's a chart on what I'm saying about this. Either you get super upset, super sad, very frustrated, or something bad happens to an ally. You yourself start to take damage and start to worry about stuff and you start to lose control. This is the extreme emotions type of thing that can happen probably more often than not because the second way is a full moon, which is a wisdom saving throw. This is a magical type of effect, something having to do with the moon. If there's some lore behind all of that, too with the moon and you can take that and run with it too but seeing the moon having the moon have a magical force and act on you is a wisdom saving throw to be able to resist shape shifting with the moon and while we're talking about saving throws here there's also an intelligent saving throw after you leave your werewolf form this lichen form that you shift into you make an intelligent saving throw once you come out of it to see if you remember anything that happened while you were shapeshifted. so that gives us the full spectrum of all the mentality of this werewolf charisma to control your emotions to fight that urge wisdom saves to be able to shake off this full moon type effect and intelligent saves to be able to keep your mind and memory intact and yes of course there is the forceful transformation where you yourself actually want to shapeshift into a werewolf but that cannot happen until you control this thing which we'll get into in a second because now we're going to talk about the mechanics of transforming once you have transformed what do you get good and bad i shift this into boons and banes the boons are of course dark vision resistance to physical damage from non-silvered weapons because 
this is a side rant, I guess. I think immunity to m normal mundane weapons is dumb, especially to give it to players. In my homebrew campaign I'm running right now, I threw four werewolves that had just turned into werewolves, just contracted lycanthropy, had no control over it whatsoever. I threw three of them at my party at level two. So it would be crazy if they were just immune to any type of melee weapons. Also, magical weapons is a whole nother side rant I could talk about as well. Basically, I just think immunity is too much. I know werewolves and if you want to have werewolves put, be put on this pedestal in your games and have immunity to mundane weapons, I just think that opens up a really weird thing. If a werewolf attacks a city and none of them have silvered weapons, I think it could eventually get hacked down with a bunch of mundane weapons. So resistance makes much more sense to me than immunity that feels a little too godly for werewolves. I don't want to put it on that high of a pedestal. And especially if you give it to players and a player has lycanthropy, immunity yeah, it just feels a little too much. So resistance is what feels much better for me. And the third thing, the third boon you get is claw attacks. We're using a strength modifier that you're proficient with. You'll be able to get more damage from your unarmed swiping claws. And then there's banes, the negative side effects of lycanthropy, which is two things. Silver vulnerability. I know vulnerability, I think it's underused in D&D. I'm throwing vulnerability to silver on there. It gives dungeon masters a tool and really players a tool to combat werewolves. Anything with silver tips something or other, you are vulnerable too. So that should be a very scary thing. And if you are a player with lycanthropy, you should be watching out for silver type things because that would be really bad. And the second bane is wolf's bane. <laughs> Hey, see. <laughs> Wolf's Bane is a poisonous plant to you specifically. It's to, meant to ward off werewolves and you can use it as part of the lore in your campaign too. But if you were to take Wolf's Bane and turn it into a poison or dip your weapons in it or something, it deals additional damage and werewolves are poisoned from it real bad. But the biggest part here and the coolest part is you also gain special abilities based on what type of lichen that you are because I feel like a werewolf would gain much different properties than a were badger or a were mole or a were armadillo. I love the concept. I have a wear armadillo mini of the burrowing and all that kind of stuff. The hard shell would be a much different traits. So how would you do something like that? Time out. Me and my team have developed a point by system for building your own unique lichen for any type of creature that you want. There are 30 different features in this month's DC Playbook PDF that we are packing in a whole bunch of different stuff. There's a bunch of general resources you can use in your game, but the very first featured article in this thing with the spooky month of October is a point by lycanthropy system. This PDF also has everything that we're talking about in this video too, all laid out with clean tables, really cool art, all that kind of stuff. Nice for easy for you to print off and use at your tables. But in there is 30 different features you can pick and choose from for these specific type of lichens. Each ones are balanced and worth a certain amount of points the DM can take and build their own custom lichen to throw at their players. I recommend for you to get six points, go shopping through that whole system. Maybe it's flying and you want to do some sort of wear bat or wear crow or wear eagle. I don't know. But this is very synonymous with my point by feet system, which is my most popular PDF over on my website. I'll have that in the description too. You can build a character in the same way based around a 200 different mini feats that you can customize a character and race. So I thought this was a perfect fit and a perfect system for lycanthropy as well. And in that PDF, we have 20 different examples of 20 different types of lichens using these points in a variety of ways, which I would love to see what you guys do with this. There's even a wear raptor in there just because love dinosaurs. But how to get your hands on this thing? Link down in the description, there'll be a link to Patreon where I give my patrons monthly D&D PDFs every single month. Last month's was enchanting. I have a whole bunch of other resources for traps, magic items, riddles, puzzles, uh, bonus level up perks to give to your players. Lots of different stuff. I got single page adventures coming next month. I want to be able to help you guys out and say thank you for the support by giving you resources you can use at your game table right now. So check it out. If that sounds interesting. I do want to make a video about this to give you guys all the big picture of everything. But if you really want to take this and run with it, I got a bunch of stuff in there too. All right, back to it. Also, I just thought about this. I want to throw this out there. If you don't get the PDF, if you want to be able to do this on your own, you can totally do that. I'm just trying to make things easier on you guys and give you resources. But look at all the different lichens out there. There's a ton of different lichens in the monster manual. There's a ton of different monsters out there with features. Just give those features as part of these six points that you want to customize this lichen. You can give it a burrowing speed, give it a flying speed, give it some pack tactics. Think about the different stuff that other monsters have that you want to be able to give this werewolf lichen for. Okay, so now we've contracted lycanthropy. We understand what the positives and negatives and all the abilities and mechanics are of it. 
but how do you control it? Because I think this is the biggest missing piece from rules as written from really anything with lycanthropy is you gotta be able to fight this thing and gain control of it. So whenever someone first contracts lycanthropy, they have no control over it, whether it's from a curse or from getting bitten. Over time, you make saves and experience in this form, you gain mastery levels. I have a chart I'll put up right here that shows what I'm talking about here. And there's a progression from a wild feral beast that literally the DM controls what you do all the way to you being able to control it at will and shape shift and control and still retain a lot of your own features. So at first you have to make a save to even shift at all. You uncontrollably see the moon, your emotions, you start taking damage, you see someone go down, you get angry, you're gonna have to make some sort of save to see if you can shift, whether it's emotional, charisma saving throw, wisdom throw, seeing the moon, whatever it is, you might not even be able to control shifting in the first place. And as soon as you shift, the moment that you shift into your lichen form, the DM takes control of your character. I would still have all my players roll their D20s and roll for damage and stuff, but you are barely attacking the closest thing near you, which might be an enemy, but it also might be your friends. But then as soon as somebody makes a save for the first time and they were about to turn to a werewolf, but they make that save, for the first time they're able to fight off that control over them, now they gain one mastery level. And as a dungeon master, you can see whatever situations or moments that they've proven control over this thing and you can get award mastery levels. I go over into it more in the PDF, but I kind of do want that to be a dungeon master feel thing. If, if you're seeing them control it more and you award them, you tell them you gain le level two mastery, maybe print off the chart, whatever. But another level of control is every turn, once you've been able to have some level of mastery over this thing, you're still having to fight it. I want to get across that struggle at the table. So they've shifted into werewolf form. They've lost control. They're attacking stuff. Every turn at the top of their turn, I would give them a save to try and be able to control this thing for one round just one round and then for that round they can do whatever they want and then it takes back over and they have to keep making those saves at the beginning of their turn to see if they can control their own turn or not maybe it'd be the same thing if they're right next to an enemy who knows but that'd be a really interesting way to get across this struggle and then you keep progressing it farther and once they make that save in the middle of combat from that moment on they can control their character and you see where i'm going with this it's a progression where slowly you gain control of it to where eventually you can shift on command and you're in control. Maybe even let your caster start to cast spells while in lichen form. That's super cool, just thought of that. Yeah, I put that at like mastery level seven or something. But this is the mechanics that I feel like are missing from being able to gain control. And once the player finally has control over that lichen form and they get to the point where they can finally shift on command and back to their form on command, that's gonna feel so, so rewarding compared to I do it or I don't. Now for curing it, I wanna save this to the end for all the people that stay here and watch the end of these videos. I really Really appreciate that and since it's a well-guarded secret it should also be a well-guarded secret in your game don't have it just be oh you cast cure or oh they have to do that like it should be something that they have to kind of figure out unless lycanthropy is this big huge obvious thing that people have done plenty of research on and are very familiar with my players are going through this right now i have tried to to bite them with lycanthropy they keep making their saves and they keep out thinking the lichens but uh if that ever happens they're gonna have to figure out and go find people go talk to someone to be able to get what these steps are to even be able to cure this thing so here's my version of this curing system i wanted to bring in a lot of the different components and you can Think about these types of things for creating any sort of cure to different curses, whether it's a cursed magic item or a disease of some kind, kind of like we're talking here. But I wanted to get the different elements of silver, wolf's bane, all these types of things and do them all at once. So here are the conditions. The lichen must drink a potion of wolf's bane. Ooh, maybe that's a whole nother side quest. We have to go get wolf's bane, find how to make a wolf's bane potion. Once you have a wolf's bane potion, okay, the lichen has to drink the wolf's bane potion and be stabbed in the chest with a silvered blade. This blade must remain in its chest until the lichen's reduced to zero hit points. And then at that point, you can cast Remove Curse. And this is just a starting point. You can take this and make it your own, add in more steps. Maybe there has to be a full moon. That's another cool thing. Maybe you have to do this whole thing while it's a full moon. Maybe they have to be shapeshifted in their lichen form to be able to have this happen. Or maybe you remove some steps and all they have to do is drink the potion and they have to be able to find that out find the wolf's bane, find the potion, drink the potion, and they're good. So there you go, now you're cured of lycanthropy, and if you wanna get your hands on this whole thing again, there's all this PDF bundled in one, the link's down in the description for that. And here's the full list of the lichens that I have on this thing. We got ant, ape, badger, bat, bear, beetle, boar, cat, crab, crocodile, fox, goat, hyena, lizard, octopus, all of these are full-blown lichens with the different traits and stuff. Uh, the rafter that I talked about, rat, raven, shark, turtle, and wolf. But I would love to see what your own descriptions are and your own uh, lichens are down in the comments down below. So until next time, stay creative. 
think outside that box. Peace.